So far, our enemy design is looking okay. First, we were given a short brief, and from that brief, we made a draft. No problem. Then Ryan came back, and he said, well, you know, the design got a lot of new updates. So we dug in, we broke down the brief, and what we were left with was a clear pile of requirements. But that's not a second draft. So how do we turn this list into a drawing? Welcome to the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges to tackle. Today's challenge is to revise, and especially if you're new to concept art, or maybe you've never worked on a team before, it's really hard to know the difference between making changes and actually improving something. The danger, I think, is when we get into the question of shapes. These silhouette paintings here by Neil Blevins are really nicely drawn. But when I look at them out of context, like you're looking at them right now, there's really no way for us to determine which one is best. We can zoom in here and, you know, there's all sorts of fun details and maybe you find yourself drawn to this one, number seven. And maybe I say, you know, actually, I'm really digging number five. That is a very subjective judgment call. But for your revisions, let's focus on something that's much more concrete, the text. Here's the list we created in the last homework. And in my experience, game designers, they're sort of the fun experts. And then we have the writers. Well, they're the narrative experts. But our job as artists is to join these two ideas by making visuals. The visuals become the way we deliver gameplay and narrative wrapped up together. So even though Ryan's design includes a fair number of visual requirements, these blue ones here in the middle, I'm actually going to think of those as more recommendations than requirements. I'll keep them in mind. The high priority items here are the narrative and the gameplay, which leaves our task to synthesize these bullet points into kind of a clear, simple essence. A great first step is to shorten our list by eliminating what we could just call freebies, because some of these bullet points are already associated with spiders, so our design doesn't really need to do any extra work. Spiders climb walls. Everybody knows that. Same goes for biting. Same for leaping. That just happens on its own. We're designing a spider. It's going to do those things. I'd go so far as to say creating sticky traps, also not really a problem. But having a ranged laser attack, having sensor, vulnerable eyes, those don't happen automatically. Okay, let's go to the next column here. I think since we're working with a robot spider, it is by default high tech. It's a spider, so it's probably going to be lightweight. That makes it generally vulnerable. And I think just it being a spider that meets all these criteria we just listed just sort of makes it offensively oriented to begin with. Now, having eight piston legs, that is a little tricky. I can tell you from experience that if you design a creature in a video game that has tons of tiny little legs, they're tough to animate, they have a ton of polygons, and they might end up just being so tiny on screen that all that extra work is, isn't even worth it. So even though a real world spider obviously has eight legs, I'm going to leave the specifics here as a low priority. So I'm going to say this is not automatic. Now in the narrative column, I don't think either of these things are automatically associated with a spider, future or some sort of oppressive government. To me, there's really no link there. So what we've done is we've really shortened this list because as soon as I draw any spider, we can already assume that most of these things will be accounted for. And we are left with essentially puzzle pieces. What we need to do next is to think of something else that people will understand is associated with these functions. And there's actually a really fun board game that exercises these exact muscles. If you've never played it before, Codenames presents you with a grid of unrelated nouns. And your job while playing this game is to link them conceptually. But you can't really communicate with your partner. You're only allowed to say a single word. But what you have to do with that one word is to link these nouns that are on the playfield. So in this setup, let's just pretend my goal was to link the words Hollywood and spy. Those two words are pretty unrelated. Now think about that for a second. What could you tell a partner with one word that would link those two ideas? Well, what I might say is 007, because when I say 007, they'd know I'm talking about James Bond, and 
again, they're not looking at this. All they see are all these nouns, and I say the word 007. And they look around and they think, okay, which of these are related to 007? They'd say, oh, okay, Hollywood, I get that. That's probably one of those words, and spy. So what I've done with one word is I have linked two unrelated concepts. If I wanted to link mammoth and horn, I might say tusk. If I wanted to link worm and carrot, they don't seem obviously related, but I could say underground. And when we look at the rest of all these things, most of them could not be considered underground, but worms live underground and carrots grow underground. And that's what I'm doing here. The remaining concepts on this list are not obvious fits for a robot spider. But there's a chance that I can think of something or multiple things that relate them to one another. And so I'll jump forward here, but what I came up with is the security camera. Because we know that security cameras are sensors. They identify people. Sometimes we associate lasers with security systems. And then when it comes to oppressive governments, well, they make heavy use of surveillance. And so the last remaining things here are these, these visual ideas that were sort of a keep in mind. And honestly, that means that I'm going to kind of take these off the table for a minute. But the important thing is that we have a bunch of the ideas checked off by just being a spider. And then the remaining hard to fit ideas were linked by being like a security camera. So here I have the kind of important narrative idea, the important gameplay ideas all relate to each other. At this point, I am satisfied. We have a robot spider that is like a security camera. I'm relying on cultural associations to explain the design for itself. And so in the final result here, what I've actually done is I've combined the laser and the eye. Those were both important gameplay elements, but I was thinking about a spider it's so far away, it's really small, I don't think adding an extra laser is going to really help anything. And so since I was looking at this reference of the security camera and thinking about laser security systems, I thought, well, why not? Just roll them into one. So here we have a spider that reads enough like a spider for us to understand that it would climb on walls and climb on the ceiling. It doesn't really need eight legs to do that. And I've totally changed the proportions around. So where previously my last spider had a big butt, this spider has a big head because what I really wanted to stand out visually was the thing that is going to need a little explaining. It's a spider. You get that it's a spider. That's fine. The part that's a little weird is that it is also a security camera that shoots lasers. So on screen, I wanted to make that as big as possible and have a chance at communicating when it needs to. If I had kept this realistic spider proportions, it would still work, but by making this bigger, it's just a little more obvious. So your homework is to continue with your brute enemy design. Take those bullet points you came up with in the last challenge, figure out which ones are going to be a natural fit, and then you're going to be left with some that are not a natural fit. That's where you get to be a designer. Think about some way to signal to the audience with a visual association how to have it speak for itself, and then make a sketch. Now this is not easy work, so don't worry if it doesn't flow right away. We are gonna learn how to do this better with each challenge, so cut yourself some slack. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next lesson.